I am hunting with Blake Smith solo for the first time here in Maryland. I was fortunate enough to meet Blake several years ago when I hunted with field staff member Pete Hauer, who unfortunately has moved away from the area and is now living in Utah. Blake has been gracious enough to give us the permission to continue these hunts. So, uh, you know, Fox Pro Fur Takers are indebted to Blake Smith for his support of what we do in the Fox Pro Fur Takers. This area does not get hunted. I'd really be the only one to hunt it, and I'd probably predator hunt once or twice a year uh, as time allows. Blake takes us around to a lot of the properties that he has so that we can get a day's eye view of the fields that we're going to be hunting. We could just go to the top of this hill right here where it crests. See that? And just set up right there. It's a fox. And right away, we see a red fox out there mousing in the fields. Oh my God. You gotta be kidding. <laughs> Come on out in about three hours, pal. <laughs> when you look around, I mean, you got a lot of timber. You've got some water down here in front of us. We got a lot of geese in the fields, you know, and a lot of uh, more agricultural fields over here surrounded by timber. This is perfect habitat for red fox. And you can see they've got them here and you see something like that, and it's hard for a fur taker to walk away from it without trying to call that fox in. I'm gonna start with baby cottontail. Watch we turn that call on, he hears it and he starts to come our way. He's still mousing on the way in. And I quickly realized that he's not gonna come in any farther. If he comes in a little bit closer, I might be able to get a shot. I thought he was about 150. He wasn't, he, he was yeah, a little he was bit lower than 150. Yeah, that's cool though, you come out and we do a spot like this mm -hmm. and we're scouting, checking it out and got a red fox in the field. Who, I mean, how do thought? you not set up on a yeah, fox you like have to that? try. The nice thing is we're shooting suppressed so I don't think he was too buggered. Yeah, I think he will be and good to come back. There's plenty more fox in this area, so. I am certainly no match to, to uh, a, a live animal that that fox encounters on the way into the call. But it's a good sign, you know, because they're in the area. We know that there are fox here on this property. The question is, are they still gonna come out that night if they're feeding through the day? That remains to be seen. We're down here in Hunt Valley, Maryland. I'm with Blake Smith and Gene Boudreaux. We're actually gonna be hunting with Thermal Vision tonight. Night Goggles is one of our newest sponsors. You know, let me go over this setup that we're gonna be using. I'm really excited to use this. I have the SR556 uh, with a suppressed armament suppressor on it, so we're gonna be shooting a lot quieter than we normally do. And then on top, I have this Pulsar Apex uh, thermal imaging scope on top, so there's not gonna be any lights. Then I have everything sitting on top of this Caldwell rest. I can be completely hands-free. Getting introduced to thermal now has been a different tactic that I know that once I've become accustomed to it is going to be a, a very important move to us. You know, we've got to move forward and as technology becomes available to us that will improve our odds and our success rates, you can be sure that I'm going to take part in that technology. There's something in this field over here. A 
Unfortunately, the wind is at our backs going right to that fox. He gets our wind and turns and busts out. Mother Nature, she wins every time. Can't control Mother Nature. All right, there's something in this field over here. Early January, we're in Maryland hunting in complete darkness thanks to night goggles. So night goggles has provided us with some Pulsar Apex thermal scopes. They've also provided us with some thermal scanners. We're going to be scanning with the scanners. And as we see the heat indexes, we're going to go over to the scopes. One thing that I will say about thermal is that there is a learning curve. You know, because I am used to lights, I can quickly identify animals just by looking at the eyes. And when you're looking at thermal, it's a little bit different. You know, you're looking at the heat indexes. There is uh, some getting used to. I'm gonna start off with Devil Bunny. You got something good, you stick with it. I felt really good about this particular stand. And it's only four or five minutes into the stand that Blake gets eyes off to the right. All right, guys, I've got a fox coming from right to left out of the hedgerow. Guys, we've got the monkey off our back. Good spot, Good Blake. job, guys. Good job. Great, great shot. Good job. Thank you, Jim. Good job. You get, to get, the, you get the rifle now. Awesome. <laughs> Glad to hear it. Man, that's a big red. Nice one. That's a big red. That's a big fox. Yeah. Nice fox. Yeah, that's a big red right there. At hollow point, I'm shooting a 53 grain Hornady hollow point. They're a little, they're more fur friendly than the VMAX for these fox. Uh, it looks like he's hit a little bit low, but that's one thing that I'll say about the thermal. You know, it's like shooting with lights. Until you get used to it, holding on is, is a little bit different. You know, you got to get used to knowing where the front shoulder is, knowing where the back yep. leg is. It's, it's different when you're hunting with lights. Thermals is a, just like anything else, it takes a little bit of getting used to it, yep. know where to hang on to and where to hold to. They'll skin out real nice. He's oh, got a yeah. real nice tail. Certainly. Now we're at that same stand now that we were at. Remember, we were scouting and called that red fox in. Be anxious to see if we call something else in after we just called and shot at that fox. So with this snow just now starting to come down, the front's moving in, we've got to capitalize while we can before it starts snowing too much and we're not able to film anymore. We'd still be able to continue to hunt, but it's a lot different when you're trying to film it. I got something up here, Blake, right up on this hillside. Got him. I just took off. We got our wind. Let's keep calling. We've only been here about eight minutes. You know, one thing that that snow does for the thermal imaging is it comes down and it gives you a blanket 
of fogginess almost that makes it a little bit harder to see. You know, you can still see the heat indexes really well through it, but it's just hard to get the detail in some of the other surrounding landscapes, you know, the structures, the trees. All right, there's something in this field over here. Wasn't here earlier. Ah, oh, it just took off. That fox was coming in good too, got our wind. That's two fox called in on that stand. <laughs> Mother Nature wins every time. If it's not the snow, it's the wind. It's always something. So we've got a decision to make. You know, do we want to keep filming? Do we want to wait a little bit? Do we get better conditions? Wait for that snow to stop. We're gonna give it a break a little bit. Wait till that snow dies down because it's really jacking with the lights and thermal, so. I'm gonna wait till that snow dies a little bit and come back out later. We're in Maryland hunting in the Coxieville area, more specifically Hunt Valley, which is uh, precisely named for exactly what we're doing. Where we're going is right here in Coxieville and it looks like it's about to get a window, so if we head up there and we may be able to get out of the snow, we can go try that. Hopefully, we can beat this storm and get some more opportunities to call another fox in. I don't, I don't know, it doesn't look like it's a big window, but we may be able to get there in time and be able to get a standing where we don't have a lot of snow. We'll be using two rigs on this trip as far as the camera goes. We will be using a thermal imaging camera that was provided to us by Night Goggles, but we're also going to be using IR light with a separate camera to try to give you a different perspective of what you're seeing different from the thermal imaging. And that IR light is not visible to the human eye. You know, we're in a pretty tight area. I'm gonna start with full squeeze. Tight kind of soft here. We're only a couple minutes into the stand. 10 yards away from us, I've got this fox. I pick him up in the thermal scope real quick, but he knows that things aren't right. There's something wrong in this stand. But he makes a vital mistake. He stops before he leaves. Okay, he's down. We're early in this stand, so we keep calling. I change the sounds up. And as he's standing there, he's behind a tree. I don't have a clear shot at it. Never did get a shot at that fox, you know, but I'm liking what I'm seeing right now. It's obvious to me that Blake's properties are just loaded with predators. We called that perfectly. You know, yeah. we looked at the radar. We saw there was a, a break right here, and we came, and there was hardly any snow at all, so. That's probably this year's red fox. He wasn't going anywhere. He dropped right there. But tonight's been awesome, so we just gotta keep at it, and hopefully Mother Nature cooperates with us a little bit and yeah. gives us another opportunity, but that was a pretty crazy stand. Yeah, that was a wild one. <laughs> <laughs> Done. <laughs> you know, this is the last night of our hunt. We're at a new property over here. The Blake has seen a lot of fox, actually shot some fox over here. It's pretty cold, there's no wind. I mean, we got about a five mile an hour wind. It should be pretty good. Nice. 
he's coming back. That's awesome. We needed that skin that was right good, there. Man. Very nice, Mike. That was good. Yeah, we needed that stand right there. You know, hunting down here has been awesome. While the kill count on this show may not reflect the amount of predators that they have down here, we certainly had our opportunities, and we'll only get better at what we do with this setup. I certainly had a good time, as I do on every hunt. The Fox Pro guys come down. This is what you get for uh, being patient and resilient. You know, so thank you to Blake Smith for allowing us the opportunity to come down here. Thanks for your support of the Fox Pro Fur Takers. You know, we are very blessed to be able to film these shows for you. If you're able to watch the show and just learn one little piece that's going to make you a more successful predator hunter, the show was a success for us. We want to show you, the viewer, that you can hunt fox and coyotes and predators right in your backyard. We go across the nation, from California to Vermont, Texas to Alberta, Canada. Get off the couch, do this one time. I know you'll be hooked. It has been a great season, and we're looking forward to next year, and I hope you tag along. Thank you for watching. To all of you viewers who tune in each week to watch Fox Pro Fur Takers right here on the Outdoor Channel, thank you. Thank you, everyone, for watching Fur Takers on the Outdoor Channel every week. Thank you once again for tuning in every week and watching Fox Pro Fur Takers. Until next season, Stay after them.